Hello everyone, this is the IFC Architect and today we're doing part 4, 2D detail, basically a call out or a detail in a simple IFC project coming from the previous three videos. If you missed the modeling, the plan, the section and elevation, those videos are available on the channel. Alright, so last we finished was the elevation. We're going to go back into the plan, select my story plan, we're just going to say activate the drawing. I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to adjust my terrain so it's fixed so it doesn't show up in our plan. I'm going to grab this, go into 3D. With the multi-object tool selected, I'm going to press tab twice, press 3, and then we're just going to make it bigger than the drawing. I'm going to say GX, bring it up by 1500, and then I'm going to select the other side, I'm going to press naught, I'm going to say GX, bring it out minus 2500. I'm going to press tab and tab again just to save that. And then I'm just going to press control S and then we can get going. So I'm going to press naught, select the plan, say activate. Then we're going to place our 3D cursor basically there on this wall here at the bottom of the office. We're going to select section. We're going to select east. And then we're going to click on this little plus icon to add a drawing in. You can see it's been added and you can see here under sections, it's been renamed uh, east section X. I can just rename this detail one, I'm going to select that, I'm going to say activate view, and you can see we're in the space. From here, we're not going to adjust anything, we're just going to select the, the camera, and we're going to adjust the width and height to be about a thousand. And you can see it's zoomed in, but we want to be up here by the roof instead of down here by the floor. So we're just going to say GZ and drag this up so it lines roughly with the roof. And I'm just going to turn off my snaps and just say G and kind of center it on the roof there, basically. Right, and then I'm just going to change the scale from 1 to 100 to 1 to 10. And we're going to check what this looks like in the printed version. So we're just going to say activate drawing again. We're just going to say create drawing. And then we're going to say open drawing. And then we can see that's what our drawing looks like at the moment. So the first thing we're going to do is add in a button. So we're going to create a beam, essentially, that acts as a button. We're going to hold click on this column tool, go to the beam tool. We're going to click on this little waffle grid icon there. And we're going to say create new beam and we're going to call this uh, baton 50. It's going to be a beam. Uh, we're just going to say a extruded profile. We're going to not select the profile for now. And we're just going to say, okay. Then with the beam selected, we're just going to select this. It's given it a random profile. We're going to say, okay. We're going to say close. We're going to snap our 3D cursor. Make sure you turn on your snaps again. Snap our 3D cursor there. Click on the beam tool, make sure we've, we've selected our baton 50, and we're just going to say add in. And it's going to give us <clears throat> two points. So we're just going to add in our beam. We're going to click here and then there, and we're going to press enter. And we're just going to say GZ and bring it up so it's inside of the viewport. Then we're going to go to our geometry and materials. We're going to select our beam here. We're going to go to profiles. So this is project wide profiles. We're going to click on this little drop down. We're just going to add in a arbitrary close profile, or to be honest here, we just need a rectangular profile. So we're going to say rectangular profile def, definition, I suppose. Click plus. We're going to scroll down here where it says new profile. We'll double click on this, and we're just going to say 50 by 50. Then we are just going to click edit, and we're going to make the X 50 and the Y 50. And we're just going to click tick to save it. Then make sure you still have the beam selected. You're just going to go to object materials and you click on the little pencil icon and over here you're just going to click on the enable editing material over here and then here instead of demo c you're just going to select 50 by 50 and you're going to say save changes and then we're just going to click edit assign material there and you can see our beam has adjusted over there now we're just going to adjust this so it aligns with our whole shape there we're just going to say g z up and then align it with the side there and say g y so it snaps to this corner. And then we're just going to rotate it five degrees. So we're just going to say rotate five, enter. And then just make sure it aligns with your roof. So we just say G and snap it to there. And then from here, we can go to parametric geometry and go to array. And you can say new array found. We click on this little pencil icon. And then we choose the direction. So this is the local. Uh, you can use the local space, so you can use the global space. I'm going to give it 300 millimeter spacing. Uh, let's just check which direction it goes and press tick. You can see that is the wrong direction. We can see we probably want the X or the Z direction. Let's just check it out. Yes. Okay, cool. So we want the X direction. 
for us, we're just doing this detail, but uh, if you were doing the entire structure, you would want the batons to go all the way to the end. It'll probably be about 12, something along those lines. We can check that out. Yes. Okay, cool. And then we just say tick. And then we want to adjust the roof. So we're just going to adjust it up. I'm going to say GZ and GZ and snap it to the bottom of the beam there, basically. So now the roof is sitting on the battens. We want the roof to have a tiny bit of an overhang here. So now we're done with the battens. We select the roof, select the slab tool, because that's what the roof is being made with. We're going to press seven just to go to above. With the roof selected, we're going to press tab and then tab again. We're going to press two. We're just going to select this edge here and say G Y Y. And we're going to bring it down by 50. So minus 50. Press enter, press tab, tab again. And then we can press naught to go back to our view. And you can see we've got a slight overhang for our roof there. From here, we're just going to create a fascia board. We're going to do the same trick. Place my 3D cursor. We're going to go to beams. We're going to click on this little beam thing here. Um, I'm going to duplicate my baton here just to speed the process up. I'm going to rename this and just call this fascia 50 and press OK. But I'm just going to select it, make sure it is active, click OK. And we're going to say, uh, make sure fascia 50 is selected here and say Shift A. And it's going to ask you for a front and an edge. So we can click there and click there, press Enter. I'm going to say G, Z, so it's in the camera. Press Naught so I can see it. And you can see there it is. Essentially, we want this to be 300 by 20. So we're going to create a new profile, select the beam itself, go to profiles. We're just going to create a new rectangular profile. You can see here it says new profile. We can call this uh, 20 by 300. Then we just click edit and then over here X 20 and then Y 300. And we're going to say tick. You can see it's adjusted. Then we're going to go to object materials. We're going to click on this little uh, drop down and then click on the little uh, pencil icon again, and then you're going to select 20 by 300. We're going to say save changes, and we're going to say tick. Then you just adjust the fascia board. Click the fascia board, say GB. Snap it to the corners there. We're just going to rotate it by five degrees so it aligns with the angle of the roof. Snap it to the corner there, and you can see we've aligned with the edge of our roof there. All right, so now we're going to do our ceiling. So I would click on the hold long click on the wall tool, click on the covering tool. I'm going to click on the waffle grid there. I'm going to create a duplicate of uh, cover 30. So we're just going to say duplicate there. And I'm just going to rename this and I'm just going to call this uh, cover 20. So I want this to be my ceiling. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to make sure that uh, cover 20 is active. That's what we want. And then we are just going to go press seven on our number pad. We are going to snap to the corner of the roof and we're just going to say shift a or just add and you can see it's been added in there and then with the selected <clears throat> we're going to press tab twice and then we're going to adjust it so it is the width of the rooms so i'm going to say gy gx gy 3d just make sure this is on the inside of the wall so we're just going to say gy so there we're going to press tab tab again. I'm going to press, uh, I'm going to make sure this is still selected. I'm just going to say G, Z, bring it up into our drawing and press naught so we can see what we're looking at. I'm going to say G, Z and then G, Z so it aligns to the bottom. Then we're going to press tab, tab, <clears throat> select the edge here. I'm going to press naught. I'm going to say G, Y, Y and then that will align it to the angle. Snap it to the corner there and press tab, tab, and you can see our ceiling has aligned to that point there. All right, so all of our physical objects have been modeled and now we can go into the 2D portions. All right, so let's have a look at what this looks like in 2D. We're gonna go back to drawings and documents. We're gonna select the, uh, the drawing there, activate, print, and then view. And there you can see everything's being cut, but these things don't have materials. So we need to assign some materials to these things. So we're going to add materials into all of the elements that don't have a material yet. So I'm going to select and start with the ceiling. I'm going to go to geometry and materials. Here in object materials, I'm going to add in one of the default materials, which I will flash up on the screen. And I'm just going to choose sand for the ceiling. I'm going to press tick. This is just a hatch pattern designated. And then select the fascia board. I'm going to use sand as well. So here where it's his name. The 
the one I want for the buttons is going to be blank. The one I want for my roof is going to be cross hatch three in this case. All right, so let's go back to drawing the documents, activate, print, and view. And then you can see we've assigned materials to each of our elements. So the next thing we're gonna do is move on to our annotations. We're gonna select our annotation tool. We're gonna come and select batting, which is insulation. We're gonna choose location with our 3D cursor of where to add it. And then we're gonna click Shift A or Add. It's gonna give us this little preview. And basically what we wanna do is align the angle of this line with the ceiling. So I'm gonna grab this line and I'm gonna say GY with the inside of the wall here and say GZ, align it with the ceiling. Grab this one, say GY, bring it just outside of the camera and then say GZ and align it with the ceiling there. Then once that's done, I'm gonna select both. And by default, the batten is now 150 uh, thick and the length is auto-calculated. So you don't have to do the spacing like we used to before. There is a preview, but you're gonna see just now that it's not too accurate. But when it prints, it's perfect. But basically, since it's 150 thick, we just need to offset this by 75 millimeters above the ceiling so it fits. So we say G, Z, 75, enter, and then we press tab and then tab. There's the preview. It's just giving us the angle, but it's not really giving us an accurate thickness, but don't worry about that. We're just gonna say activate drawing, print, and then preview. And there you can see we have insulation where it needs to be. Next, we're doing our dimensions. So same story, grab your annotation tool, click on your dimensions, choose a location and say add. And you can see it gives you a line. We're just gonna press tab and tab so we get the preview. And then over here, we're just gonna click on edit mode so we can edit it while we have the preview present. I'm gonna say G, Y, and then G, Z to line it up with my uh, point here. I'm gonna say G, Y, and we're gonna do the thickness of the wall to begin with. And press tab to get out of that. And now I'm gonna add another dimension group just to get the angle dimension. Uh, so make sure dimension is selected. I'm gonna say add. I'm going to press tab and tab, and then I'm going to rotate this by five degrees. And then I'm just gonna press tab. I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm gonna grab this and we're just gonna say G, Y, Y. And then that will align it in the angle. And then we snap it there, G, Y, Y. And then you see that gives us exactly the right um, angle and size. We're gonna say E, Y, Y. Snap it there. We're just gonna say G, Y, Y minus one. Slightly, sometimes it can be slightly off. Then we're gonna grab this and we're gonna say shift V, X, X. Bring an arch here, grab this, G, Y, Y, snap it to there, G, Y, Y, snap it to there, G, e, Y, Y, snap it to there, and then G, Y, minus one, G, <laughs> sorry, G, Y, Y, minus one, enter, and then we're gonna press tab. And then we have our angle dimensions and our total dimension here. Then we're gonna add in a leader line. We're gonna click here, we're just gonna say leader, choose a 3D location, say add, press tab, tab, and you can see it gives us a preview. Over here, we're just gonna go into edit mode. We're going to grab this, say G, Y, uh, G, X, bring this, G, Z, bring it up, E, Y, bring it out, maybe minus 50, press tab, and we're just going to uh, move this into the position we want. So I'm just gonna say G, Y, and I'm just gonna say G, Z, and align that um, element there. And we're just gonna go back into edit mode. I'm just gonna bring this up and just G, Y a little bit further away. That's okay. I'm gonna press tab. And now I'm just gonna edit the actual text. Make sure to save as you go along. So selecting text, we're gonna click edit text. And then I'm just gonna drop in the uh, values I wanna put in. So it's just a long line, basically. It's a specification. I'm gonna copy this in from the side, but this can be anything you want. Uh, so it's just a I will read this out once it's printed, but essentially we've got the specification and then backwards backslash n to give it a new line. You can also do add a literal to add a new line, but I'm still <laughs> using this method for now. Um, and then we're just going to make it the, the box alignment to be middle left, and we can leave it as regular size. And can say, okay. And you can see it's previewing the text um, over that space. It's not always exactly perfect. So we'll, let's see how it looks like when it's printed. Um, but you can see it says 50 millimeter roof sheeting fixed to timber battens at 300 center center installed, which I've misspelled here, <laughs> per manufacturer's instructions on 200 by 3 millimeter steel C channels at 1 200 center to centers at 5 degree slope per engineer spec. 
So I'm actually going to select this and just edit text and make sure that my spelling mistake is removed. So there it is installed. We're just going to say, okay, you can see it's been fixed. We're just going to say print drawing activates, activate drawing, print it, and then view it. And you can see it is overlapping. So maybe I want to make this a bit smaller. I'm going to select the text. I'm going to say edit, adjust the font size to 1.5. And we're just going to say, okay. And you can see it fits in. <clears throat> we're going to say activate drawing, create drawing, and then print. And there it all fits in perfectly. All right. So the last thing we want to do is add in a a uh, fill area just to bridge the gap. So this would be brick fill, but I'm going to use a uh, sealant. In this case, annotation tool, we're going to use a fill area. We're just going to say add. It's going to give me an area. I'm just going to grab the bottom here and align it with the whoop, with the uh, wall there. Say GY and GY. And then we're just going to grab these guys and say GZ and GZ. And then that's going to give us the area there. And we press tab two times. We're going to go to object information, um, collapse everything we don't need, go to edit. And here where it says object type, you're just going to type in sealant, all caps. So this is a default material type, which again, I'll put on the screen so you can see. And we're just going to say save attributes. We're going to go back to drawings and documents, activate, print, and view. And you can see the sealant has been added in there. And now I'm just going to add lines in for the buttons, just so I know it's being cut. So we're just going to snap and we're going to go to create a line. I'm going to use a, there's types of lines now. So we need a fine line. I'm going to say add. I'm going to grab this edge, say GY, uh, GZ, GY. And then we are just going to basically continue with this trend. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to say shift D, Y, GZ, D, Y, GZ. And then grab that, shift to D, Y, G, Z, shift D, Y, G, Z, tab, tab. You can see we've got some lines in place. That's showing that it's being cut. Activate, create drawing, print, and then we've got lines in the buttons. And that's how you do a detail and you can add as much information as you like from there on, essentially. All right, that's it for now. Hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope that was helpful. Just a heads up, I have a coffee page if you would like to support the creation of these videos. Coffee supporters get early access to videos and they really help create the content. So again, thank you. Awesome, thank you everyone, bye.